Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I have a super cute pop-up card to share with you. Now I know we're nowhere near Christmas yet, but I have seen many clever crafters get onto their Christmas cards early and do some throughout the year, so that when it comes to Christmas time, they're not so overwhelmed with what they have to make, and they've already got a bunch to send out, so I think that's a fantastic idea. Something I probably should have started months ago, but it's never too late to get started. So today for this card I'm using the pop-up desk die set by Lawn Fawn, the Sprinkled with Joy set, the little mouse from Love Poems, Baked with Love, my favourite, a creature with stirring, goes perfectly with that one, and a little mousy from Bubbles of Joy, and a few other little treats from the other set. And here is my little plan. I like to scribble out tiny plans sometimes if I feel like there's a lot of work to get my head around, or if I'm going to be altering and editing things in a way that isn't their, I guess, typical function. So today I'm turning the desk into a kitchen bench. So it's going to be a little bit different. There is a tiny bit of work that I had to get my head around to get it done, but I've done the work for you. So if you want to do the same thing, it's just a matter of copying these steps. I'm going to get started on my coloring with the little mice. I color them in all the same, so I might skip a few of them. Just like always, I'm coloring in with my Copics and my alcohol markers, keeping my blending super simple. I feel like it looks good enough. There is just a tiny bit of detail there so that it doesn't look so flat. I'll leave you with some music while I do all of this. I'm sure you could tell that some time had lapsed between me starting this coloring and finishing it. I think I started it one evening and then I think the next morning I finished this off. That's why it looks so beautiful and warm in this video. So here I'm just adding all my white details in. I just feel like this adds dimension and makes the images pop a little bit more.
Once this is done, I'm then going to cut everything out. I actually don't own any dies for any of these sets, so there were quite a few items to cut out for this one. Time to get assembling. So while my desk is still flat, I'm going to be adding the drawers and some of the images that are going to stick out of them. This is going to be much easier to do while this is still flat than trying to work on a 3D surface. So as you can see here, I'm working out that I should start at the top and make my way down to the bottom. So I'm going to stick my little drawers on with some PVA glue. And while that glue is still wet, I'm going to be adding the little items that are going to be popping out of the drawers. So I have a spoon, a whisk, and although it hurts me to do it, I trimmed my little mouse so that it's just like his shoulders and his little head poking out of that drawer. For the drawer handles on these today, I have layered these little circles twice, just so that they've got a tiny bit more dimension. I find when I stick these drawer handles on, they're a little bit flat, I think because they kind of sink down into that hole. So today I've doubled them up just in an attempt to make it a bit more dimensional. And I'm not sure why I went with brown for this kitchen. I have a thing for white kitchens. We have a white kitchen with a grey bench top. I feel like white kitchens look so neat and tidy, but maybe I was worried it was going to blend in with the oven a little bit too much. I don't think I've ever actually seen a brown kitchen in person for many years. But I guess the beauty of this is that you can use whatever colour card stock you want to make it look like a kitchen that maybe you grew up in or your dream kitchen. Maybe I'll do that next time. So once all of them are glued down, I leave that to dry for a little bit. And now I'm going to work on my oven and how this is going to be a part of this pop-up piece. So what I'm doing is trimming the very top of this off, right above the line that you can see here. And that's because I still want it to look like it's a stamped image. I didn't want that to disappear. For the little bits of the black lines that were left over and made it look like it had been cut, I simply went over them with one of my jelly roll pens and that covered it up. I'm going to be doing the same with the top. I'm trimming the stove top off, cutting down the sides, but on this one I'm going to leave those lines so that it looks like it joins in with the other piece I'm going to stick. So I measured this out really quick. All I did was put the oven on the front where it's going to stick and the little dials at the top and then I just drew some simple lines between them so that the sides are angled to give it a bit of dimension, like a stretched out version of what was already stamped. Once I was happy with that, I then started sticking these down. I did already fold the bottom of the desk leg and the piece under the drawers so that I could line this up properly. And it's really cool that this fits really well. I think it only hangs over the top by maybe one or two mil, but it's a pretty seamless fit. And while I'm doing Christmas theme for this, it doesn't have to be Christmas theme. You could do this for someone's birthday and use maybe the Baked With Love set with some cupcakes. I don't have the set with the smoothies, but you could do the smoothies on the kitchen bench near the oven. I guess it just opens up a whole new scene and all the ideas that can come with what you can do in the kitchen. For my floor today, I'm using my white wood grain cardstock by Lawn Fawn. And for the background, it's an older paper pad by Lawn Fawn. I can't remember the name. I know it's got knit in it. I don't think it's nitpicky. I think I'm making things up. But I thought it would make a really cute background. Down the bottom, I've stamped the sentiment, may your holidays be sprinkled with joy. And I'm going to use some red and green pearl watercolour pigments. I'm just going to sprinkle them all over that. Once that has dried, I'm then going to stick down that white cardstock. Now it's time to glue this into place. And this is always a little bit fun. I think it's a little bit daunting trying to make sure you stick it in the right spot. I had to account for the oven being a little bit longer than the desk itself. And I did still want it centered. So I just had to play around with that just a little bit to make sure it was still centered. And then I love that you just stick this down and then when it pops up, it should be in place. So for my stove top that I cut off, I decided I wanted a replacement for that. So here I am just using, I guess it's the icing for the cinnamon rolls, and I'm using them as my hot plate. I didn't need to draw too much attention to this spot, I just didn't want it to be plain white. Once that was on, I then glued all the little dials for the oven and the stove at the back. I love the way this looks. I think it's really cute. It was then time to start adding all the other elements to this scene.
felt like something was missing at the back. The pattern paper did make a great background, but that side of the card was a little bit bare. So I decided to use a bunch of these little jars from one of the baking sets. And I cut some brown cardstock with this die that's from the fireplace. I cut it a little bit short and stuck some jars on the back of it facing outwards so that it looked like I guess a little spice rack at the top of the kitchen. But in this case it's full of adorable little sprinkles. Now because the inside of my card was so heavily decorated, I didn't feel the need to do too much of a card front on this one. So I've gone ahead and used that red and green watercolour pigment again and sprinkled it all over the front. I'm using the offcut for my red background and that's going to be I guess the band across the centre. Using my stitched scallop circles, I cut two of them, one in like a pale teal and one in white to match all the colours that I had already used on the inside of this card. And then I'm going to pop some milk and cookies on the front. So I guess these little mice were baking cookies for Santa. I used a little bit of adhesive foam on the back to give this just a little bit of dimension. There was already plenty happening on the inside, but I didn't want the front of this card to be too flat. After sticking all of this down on the front, I trimmed off the excess on the edges, and then this card was done. And there we have it. This card is complete. I hope you love it. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and please don't forget to subscribe. I'll be back again soon with some more crafty tutorials. Bye for now.